Hello friends, it is the middle of November, so I decided that I would do a little mid-month check-in. Now, I was trying to vlog this week. I started uh, a vlog on Monday <laughs> and got part way through the day when all of a sudden, around, I don't know, three o'clock in the afternoon, I got really sick. <laughs> so, uh, and then I was sick for like 24 hours and then it went away. I mean, I'm still kind of stuffed up, but, uh, but yeah, it, it's a lot better than it was, but it is now, well, as I'm filming this, it is Thursday the 14th. So when you're seeing this, it'll be Friday, but I'm still like stuffed up, but I don't feel as bad as I did Tuesday. So yeah. But anyway, but I decided that in lieu of a vlog this week, I would just do a little check-in a la Sarah from Steeped in Books Style, and we would just chat about what's going on and about what I'm reading and about what I'm writing and about what I'm crocheting because Sarah likes to show her knitting and I don't knit yet. <laughs> and so I'm just going to show you my crochet. Um, so I'm also going to drink my evening wine because that's a thing that I do <laughs> and let's just get right into it. So first let's talk about the one thing that I actually finished this week <laughs> or in this mid-month. Um, I finished How to Be a Victorian by Ruth Goodman and I really, really enjoyed this. I'm reading this for Nonfiction November. Uh, I forget which prompt <laughs> I'm using it for, honestly. I think I'm using it for true because we're taught this book focuses on um, exactly what a Victorian, um, like middle class, lower or middle class person's day would have been like. So um, it's just kind of like true facts, but told in a conversational way. And that's exactly what this is, uh, I, and why I really liked it is um, Ruth Goodman actually has lived uh, in a Victorian way on a farm, and I actually just yesterday found out that there are YouTube videos about her experience living on a Victorian-style farm, uh, so I'm going to probably be watching those soon. Um, but Ruth Goodman, she's a historian and she's worked at the Victoria and Albert Museum and she's also lived on this Victorian farm and, you know, dressed like a Victorian, done the daily tasks of a Victorian. And she documents um, like actual facts from, you know, d other sources, but also puts in what, what she has experienced, like her experience wearing a corset, her experience doing a laundry day like a Victorian would. Um, she talks about, which, you know, she doesn't really have experience with this, but she talks about how uh, Victorians raised their children and the one, I mean, this isn't really funny, <laughs> but it's funny in the context that I was using it in. Um, sorry if I'm sniffing, I'm still having a cold. Um, Oh, my coworker that I am crocheting a baby blanket for has started watching like various YouTube videos on, you know, babies and things like that because it's his first child. And uh, so the day he was telling me about some of these uh, books that he, or some of these YouTube videos he had watched, um, I was reading about a passage about how Victorians used to give their babies opiates and like laudanum and things like that so that they would sleep while they were at work. <laughs> and I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> that's that's awful. But it was it was just, I don't know. I, I said it to him jokingly and was being like, oh, well, here's your childcare option. <laughs> but yeah, no, obviously not a good idea. Don't take after the Victorians in that way. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was just kind of funny in context. But 
Yeah, I really, really enjoyed this book, and I was rather surprised because I am not, like, a huge nonfiction reader. I usually get pretty bogged down, and I will admit that I skipped around in this a little bit, but overall, it was really interesting, um, and it just it basically goes from the time the Victorians wake up to the time that they go to bed every day, and then they, like, she intersperses different, like, parts of a day like sports and leisure time and that kind of thing and uh so but for the most part it just kind of chronologically goes through a day of a victorian's life and it's really really interesting and i highly recommend it so that is the only thing that i have actually finished so far this month as far as reading goes but i have been slowly making my way through uh the audiobook paired with this physical copy of Beatrix Potter, A Life in Nature. And it is by, I always cover that up, Linda Lear. <laughs> um, and this book, I will say that probably if I was just reading it, I probably would have gotten a little bit bored by now because it, it is pretty thick. Um, but listening to it while, re you know, referencing certain parts in the physical book and then there's like um there's picture sections of course like you know things like that um so that's fun to look at but listening to it is making it a lot faster to get through and I mean Beatrix Potter was an amazing amazing woman and yeah she just she led kind she didn't I wouldn't say she necessarily led a hard life, but uh, she kind of led a life that was a little less desirable than most Victorian women would have wanted for themselves. And she basically had to fight against her parents and fight against men and society to... Um, be able to have a an independent life because she didn't get married till she was later in life and she didn't really want to be under the thumb of her parents but yet she kind of still had that Victorian mentality where she had to ask them about everything even when she was into her 40s so it's it was kind of weird because she it was interesting because here she had this really uh, independent life and she had her own farm she had a, you know thriving book business um, and, and art you know she was famous for her art and you know Peter Rabbit and everything um, but yet there were certain big decisions in her life that as a Victorian woman and as a single Victorian woman she was expected to get her parents approval and she was into her 40s and still had to fight with her parents to be allowed to do certain things. And yeah, that was just, that was really interesting. So I am about, I'd say I'm about a little over halfway through it right now. I mean, I finished some more today and I didn't move my bookmark. So um, I'm a, probably about 60% done in it. And I really like it so far. I, I think Beatrix Potter was, you know, like a fascinating person. And I actually... I'm going to lend this to my friend Marsha that I talk about uh, for her to read after because she loves nonfiction and she's an artist and I think she would really enjoy this. She loves nature. So, I mean, she's basically Beatrix Potter with blue hair <laughs> so or, or green hair. I don't know what color Marsha's hair is right now. <laughs> Purple? I don't know. But uh, yeah, I, I think Marsha's really going to enjoy this. So I'm going to give this to her whenever I'm done with it. Last but not least, I have started Eden's Outcast by John Mattison. And this is for the Louisa May 2020 read-along that Kate Howe and... Uh, Megan Hannett are doing in the year, well, it's starting, obviously, in November and going through, I think, September of 2020. And they're going to be reading, I believe, all of Louisa May Elcott's works. And they decided for Nonfiction November that they would start with this book about Louisa May Elcott and her father, Bronson Elcott, which I had never heard of him before, but apparently he was a really prominent uh, kind of philosopher in his time 
in the, uh, well, in the Victorian era, I believe, although they're American, so I don't, I don't know what era that is in the, in the American side of things, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so he was, he was an interesting character, kind of a Looney Tune, but, <laughs> but also I think had a really good heart so far from what I'm reading. Um, and he really, he tried hard to live out his values, uh, but they just weren't sustainable. And, um, and I think it, it's going to be about how Louisa May kind of pushed against her father's beliefs um, and to become the, uh, the legend <laughs> that we know of her today through Little Women and some of her other books. So um, I'm only, it's, it's a very slow read, I will say that. I'm only like, you know, maybe 10% through. Um, it's pretty dense because right now we're only, we're, we're kind of going through the early life of Bronson Elcott. And at the time that I'm filming this, they have just, uh, he and his wife have just given birth to um, Louisa May. So there's a long ways to go, I'm sure. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. Uh, it's probably the slowest of the books I've read so far. Um, but I think the, the more it goes on and the more we get from Louisa May, that I'll, I'll appreciate it more. So, um, but I really liked how it tied in that Bronson Alcott was friends with um, Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau. I just think that's really cool. I They were like, he and Emerson, I think were like best friends. So I'm like, how do I not know about this guy? <laughs> so I guess because he was overshadowed by his daughter, but so anyway, that is that. So that is all for the reading portion. As far as for my NaNoWriMo experience of trying to write a theater-centered cozy mystery novel, uh, it's going okay. It's been a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Um, I have written a novel before, but at any rate, um, I have been thinking about writing a cozy mystery for a little, little bit, not, not very long, but, um, I'm not sure how good at it I am, I'll say. <laughs> the writing has been a lot harder than I thought it would be, um, but that being said, I am on track. I am at 21, 20 maybe 22,000 words at this point, um, which is right on track with where I should be. Although that is to say that today, Thursday, I don't plan to hit the 1,667 mark <laughs> for a word count. Um, I have other things that I need to do and I just I kind of need a break from it. So that is, that is that, that is what's going to happen today. I've already given myself permission. So, um, yeah, but I feel good about it. I feel good about the direction it's going. Um, it's it's fun. I have a friend from high school that um, I've been talking to back and forth on Messenger, and uh, she has been helping me brainstorm and come up with ideas when I get stuck, and she's been really helpful. So that is that has been fun <laughs> to to get to talk to her about it, and she knows like it's. It's a theater-inspired cozy, right? And I am involved in theater, and I have been since high school, and this friend of mine was involved in theater with me in high school. So she knows a lot about, like, the certain characters that I'm basing some of my other characters off of, so it's kind of fun to talk to her about them and be like, so this person is like this person. That's basically who this person is, and how do you think I should tie this person into the story with like this? And yeah, it's, it's really fun. <laughs> so, um, so I'm enjoying it, but like I said, it's, I need, I need a little break today. So I'm, I'm giving myself a pass to only maybe write like 500 words tonight so that I can at least continue my streak of, of, you know, putting in words every day, but I'm not going to pace my, or not going to force myself to write the amount of words that I need to write. So, 
But that just means they'll have to catch up this weekend, which is fine because it's the weekend, right? So it should go pretty easy. So that's where NaNoWriMo is at right now. And lastly, let's look at what I am crocheting. So I don't know if you will be able to see this. Yeah, I think you can. But this is going to be like like a shawl, maybe? <laughs> I mean, it's still kind of short, but I'm thinking it's going to be a shawl like this. Yeah, I like that. That looks cute. That's the first time I've ever put that around myself. <laughs> so I like that. Um, Tanya from the Sampler Girl sent me a link to a pattern for like a bandana shawl. And it was really cute and I really wish I could have figured it out, but I'm not real great at reading patterns yet. <laughs> and I could not for the life of me figure out the pattern. I do better with YouTube videos that show me how to do things. So I kind of nixed that pattern, but I wanted something similar. So I was just kind of browsing YouTube and I found this one and I really like it and it's knitting up really fast and I think that it'll be nice um, because I only have like this much yarn left but I think this will be plenty to at least put a few more rows on this and then it'll be just like the perfect length for like a little a little scarf shawl thingy. So, so yeah, this is my project right now, and I really like it. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, kids, that's all I have for you right now. It seems like a lot, and it is. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, I'm having a good time this November. Uh, I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed, slightly. But I decided to give myself a pass on filming this month and I will just like maybe do these like little random check-ins this month because I plan to do vlogmas this December and I need to do a little bit of pre-filming and I have not started that yet and we are at the mid-month mid mark so I need to get going with that. <laughs> so I'm going to give myself a pass to not do a ton of videos this month and not maybe not to vlog this month since I've been sick and I need to film other things. I need to save my voice because my voice is not holding up terribly well since I've been sick. So, so I hope you enjoyed this little chatty video and let me know uh, for Vlogmas if there are any specific types of videos you would like to see from me. Um, they could be book related, art related, um, what else do I like to do? Planner related. Uh, I already plan to do a book journal flip through when I get it finished. That's probably going to be a project for tonight. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I do a lot of things, obviously. So, um, but yeah, let me know if there's anything specific, any topic you'd like me to touch on, and I will try to make that happen. <laughs> So, all right, friends, I'm going to stop blabbing. I'm going to go finish my wine, and I'm going to go get into some PJs because it's been a long day. I'll talk to you later, friends.